Oh, why couldn't I have been born a flower? Then I wouldn't have to worry about a mate. You'd live a, live a heck of a life if there were no bees around. Look, Lydia, why don't we go away? I've got my boat coming up. It'll be here in the morning. She doesn't like boats. We went on one when we were first married, and she got seasick on our honeymoon. That I can understand. <laughs> Look, why don't you beat it? I know she wants to get rid of your pal. What do you mean by that, chum? You're coming back has spoiled all her plans for the future. Your coming back's made her unhappy. Isn't that so, Lydia? Yes. So why don't you like a good sport? Just go away. Evaporate. Vanish into thin air. If you're good at it, maybe I can get Orson Welles to saw you in half. <laughs> but Lydia, I... She wants you to go away, chum. Is that what you want, Lydia? Yes. Then I'm sorry. I didn't know. Well, bon voyage, both of you. And I mean it. I hope you have a fine boat trip. I never was on a boat that rolled like this. I'm getting sick. You really are sick, aren't you? Yes, Jim. Sick of pretending, too. Look, please take me back to the island. I've already changed course. We're heading back. Jim, I know what I'm going to say is cruel and... and... No, no, no. It's all right, Liddy. I understand. After all, the guy had five years to get you feeling this way about him. I wish I'd had a cha chance to start against him from scratch. I'm sorry, Jim. Here's the doc. I'll give you a hand up, and I'm going to head back out. Well, I guess this is it, Jim. Mm-hmm. This is it. You know he'll jip you all over again. Maybe. But once a sucker, always a sucker. Oh, I can't help it. I need him, Jim. All right. But don't think I won't be back. Probably on your 10th anniversary. You'll really be needing some legal advice then. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks and all the luck. Uh, turn your face this way. Oh, you've done better than that. Come back in five years and we'll see. Hey, Lydia, Jim, something wrong? Anyone hurt? Nothing but my tender pride. Well, well, what's this all about? My dreamboat rocks too much. Lydia doesn't think it'll stand a long journey, so she's changed her mind. Changed her mind? Lydia, do, do, do you mean that we... Well, that, that you and I will, will be Mr. and Mrs. Kenyon all over again? Do you still want me? Do I still want you? Does Mussolini want an aspirin? <laughs> Boy, that's what I call a romantic speech. You're in no position to be criticizing my romantic speeches, chum. Maybe, but don't forget, the positions are reversed again. What do you mean? You're Kenyon again, on the defensive, and I'm Blake, once more back on the offensive. All right. You watch this defensive play. Lydia, come here. There. Now, does Blake stand any chance in this game? Brother, not after that kickoff. <laughs> Thank you, Ginger Rogers, Preston Foster, and Alan Jocelyn for bringing us a most delightful half hour. The Lady Esther Screen Guild players were fortunate indeed in having you all with us tonight. It was our pleasure, Mr. Bradley. We know that the benefits from these programs support the Motion Picture Relief Fund's Country, House, and Clinic, an activity that is vitally important to our industry. Now, before we tell you about next week's program, here's a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. Thank you, Miss Rogers. You're looking tired, even a little older. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present one of the finest stories to come out of the war. John Steinbeck's dramatic play and motion picture, The Moon is Down. It will star Sir Cedric Hardwick and Lewis Stone. Be sure to listen. Ginger Rogers is soon to be seen in the Paramount production, Lady in the Dark. Preston Foster can soon be seen in Guadalcanal Diary. Alan Jocelyn can now be seen in Heaven Can Wait, both 20th Century Fox productions. 
The radio adaptation of tonight's program was freely based on Samson Raphael's play and Alan Scott's motion picture treatment of Skylark. Music on tonight's program was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. To help your government save tin, buy the larger size of Lady Esther face cream. And at the same time, you will save yourself money to invest in war bonds and stamps. This is Truman Bradley speaking for Lady Esther, saying thank you and good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.